You look up cybersecurity jobs. All you find is literally some variation of the word senior in every posting. Welcome to the cybersecurity job hunting market. Why are there so many jobs? It, it seems that there's so many jobs, senior level jobs in cybersecurity. It's all what companies are looking for nowadays. Why? I, I personally think it's because of, of many reasons, of course, and I'm no expert in the hiring industry, but I think I've come down with three, which is it's an expectations versus reality, specifically a hiring gap. Uh, two is the complexity of security related job and its associated responsibilities. Uh, cybersecurity is not an entry level uh, friendly field. And three is a cost center. Security is ultimately costing the business money. Uh, why hire an associate that needs mentorship and training if you can go out and find a senior level position or candidate, I guess, which kind of relates back to my point one. And all of this relates to this channel, which is cybersecurity jobs and uh, negativity. I feel like all I am on this is just negative, but I've talked about this time and time again on this channel, some variation of entry level hiring gap. And in this variation of the video, it is senior level positions. Why are there so many positions for senior level jobs? As a junior or mid-level security practitioner myself right now, you look at these job postings online and personally, I do feel a bit discouraged. In fact, I actually do feel discouraged. It's like, how am I supposed to rank to any of these expectations or um, responsibilities or even qualifications? I don't know. And perhaps I'm, I'm looking at it in the wrong way, but it does seem quite discouraging. So if you are a student or an, an associate level position, I understand how you feel. And I think a lot of people perhaps feel the same way. So here's my perspective. So expanding on point one, the hiring uh, expectation versus reality gap. Ultimately, I've learned that cybersecurity recruitment has an expectations versus reality hiring gap, which I literally just said. Basically, the candidate experience is quite nuanced. From job to job, hiring managers compared to the outside uh, recruitment HR employees are probably going to have a different set of expectations, and this can often lead to a discrepancy. I've talked about this in other videos. I'll leave one in the description below, but basically the expectation for job seekers, especially in this market right now, is pretty high. The bar is set pretty high. And what I've learned is that experience triumphs anything, whether that's a certification, college degree, experience wins it all. And the reality is for a lot of individuals, they may not possess that security related experience. Recruiters have a set of expectations that often leave the associates or students behind because why hire a set of associates that need training and mentorship if you can go out and find a senior level professional who has already had some of that experience baked into their career. And this leads me into security as a complexity. It is a complex job and to be successful, you have to be successful. So another point I've learned is that entry level cybersecurity jobs, they're very rare or perhaps don't exist. It depends on the company and its programs that they have. The entry level jobs that are available for uh, students and associates typically are highly competitive. And in, in general, this field is not very entry level friendly. Why is this? Well, a lot of security requires a fundamental base in IT. In fact, if you bring on that set of experience such as IT support, networking, uh, system administration, and many more, oftentimes it's going to make you a better security professional and even if it could be required to be a security professional. Security requires professionals to have knowledge and be well-versed in IT. And this often leads to where there's a senior level positions because it's assumed that those individuals already have a fundamental base and they bring that set of experience. In addition, successful security professionals often have to work with and collaborate across many different teams within an organization. And and having confidence in that so-called identity capital to be successful often requires previous experience and mentorship. And so, um, you know, security brings in a lot of complexities. You have to be enabled and successful. And oftentimes this just leads to, hey, we just want somebody who already has that set of experience and bringing that into your security program. And it's also highly sensitive. I mean, you're, you're talking about very highly sensitive information. Taking a brief moment to pause here, you may be wondering, what is this that's sitting behind you? It's a new desk. 
All right, so bad transition into the FlexiSpot dual motor desk E6, which is going to power my new remote work setup. The team over at FlexiSpot was kind enough to send me over this desk. I spec this desk out with a black base and a walnut top. The E6 has a strong and durable base and the wood finishing feels great. One of the standout features for me is the stability. Using FlexiSpot's built-in memory standing and sitting modes, you can lock in your desk to adjustable heights while you're working throughout the day, which is great for your productivity and health. At its maximum height, there is no wobble or shake, which is perfect if you have a lot of equipment or you like to move around while you work. The FlexiSpot E6 also came with wheel options, so I added those to the bottom, which is great if you have to move around your desk, around your room, and it also comes with the necessary cable management accessories to make your setup look clean, which is a nice bonus. Plus, it comes with a 15-year warranty on the frame and motor, so you know it's built to last. Now, if you're looking for a reliable and stylish desk, I do highly recommend checking out the FlexiSpot E6. Use the link in the description below to customize your own FlexiSpot desk. Security is a cost center. Unless you're working for a security related vendor, which is providing some sort of company product or service, a solution, your, your company, your internal department is a cost center. Sure, there can be so-called risk appointed hedges towards cyber attacks, but uh, security departments, they do not generate a revenue. They cost the business money. And this leads to a few constraints, budgets and time. If security is a cost center, then budgets have to be allocated and time is money. And so you have this once again discrepancy of if you're going to go out and hire individuals, might as well get to the top of the crop and move on. Top of the crop, I like that. So from a company's perspective, why hire on a set of associates or junior level candidates if they require that mentorship and training. If you can just get the senior level professionals, might as well do it, it's gonna cost you money anyway. With this being said, what can you do if you are a student, an associate, maybe a mid-level security practitioner? Well, I honestly don't have a secret answer. In fact, I feel quite discouraged right now. Um, you know, I think I've talked about some strategies in the past, so-called building a portfolio, networking with your local community, and making sure that you're reaching out to others. It's all very important. I think those strategies can help you, um, but unfortunately, I don't foresee the volume of senior level postings uh, decreasing and having more entry level opportunities, at least not right now in this job market. Now, if you do feel a similar way and you are discouraged, I do recommend you check out those strategies I've outlined in other videos and you know, know that you are alone in that search. In fact, I feel that very much so right now. So senior level job postings, there's a plethora of volume of them. Why do you think that uh, you know, security related jobs often have that senior level variation in it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm interested to see what other reasons you think or can devise on. Um, now, if you found this video has resonated with you somewhat, you're welcome to subscribe. And if you're not, I totally understand. Yeah, and, until the next time, you know what it is. Have a good day. <laughs> Gosh.